Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. And we have been on a series that we're going to keep going in that direction today. Uh, we have been teaching out of my book called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. My goodness, you see, it's kind of thick. <laughs> that means I got a lot to say. That means we got a lot more to go on this series. And so... Uh, if you have not been able to watch all of the episodes, go back and watch them because uh, we just can't, we don't have the time to restate so much of what needs to be said. Amen. And so um, this episode, this series rather, came out of um, a visitation that I had in 2018 when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia. God told me before I made the trip, he said, I'm going to speak to you when you're over there. And he certainly did. And Jesus came into my hotel room and spoke to me for about an hour about what is written in this book. And um, there's many directions we could take on uh, addressing this topic. But as a believer, we want you to know this. Not everyone is going to operate under a double portion anointing. So I don't want to imply that by the title, but every believer does have an anointing that abides within. Yes. And we need to learn to be skillful yes. with that anointing that abides within, draw on it, yield to it and not do or live in a way that would hinder the flow of that. Right. Amen. Amen. So that's why what we teach in this book is so applicable to everyone. So we invite you, join, a, join with us on every one of the episodes in this series because there's so much to say. Amen. Amen. And uh, there's much to learn. I said there is much to learn. <clears throat> um, Jesus spoke to me that night and you say, well, did you see him with your natural eye? No, it was not an open vision. But I knew by the word of knowledge where he was standing, heard what he said, and I became his secretary that night. And it is for everyone to pay attention in the sense it wasn't just a message for me. It's for the body of Christ. And um, we, in previous episodes, I read the entire thing that Jesus said that night. Um, the next morning, the Spirit of God said some additional things in connection with what was spoken to me the night before. So that's the portion we've been on. Um, and we're going to pick back up and continue further. Um, the, the Spirit of God said the next morning after I had that visitation, He said this, to walk in the double portion anointing calls for great accuracy. Now, notice when we say double portion anointing, just to, just to walk skillfully with that anointing that abides within calls for accuracy. Yes. It's not just a minister and being accurate in the anointing upon his life because there's an anointing that abides within every believer. Yes. But ministers, those who are separated under a, unto a fivefold office, will have an anointing that comes upon, and that's to empower them to minister to the people. Yes. But even so, the anointing within, we still need to have accuracy and walk accurately. Amen. So how do we walk accurately? Well, that's going to include uh, walking in the light of the word, being a doer of the word. That's going to include following the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's going to include obeying the will of God, the plan of God for your life. We all have to do that uh, to stay accurate. Now, um, let me go a little further today in talking about, um, <clears throat> well, I want to bypass a few things here because we, we, we can't get to every page today. <laughs> um, I want us to look at Matthew chapter six in verse 33. Of course, this is referring to every believer, not just to ministers, but to every believer. Part of living accurately is doing what Jesus said in Matthew six thirty-three. 
he spoke these words. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What things? The things you need for your life. They will be added unto you. So notice this. He first begins talking in this message, this sermon that he's preaching, and he's talking about first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So he's letting us know there's a proper order in our spiritual lives, right? That's part of walking accurately is to walk with things in proper order. He's telling us to put spiritual things first. The things that pertain to the kingdom of God, they need to be first. Now notice this. How do we put them first? Seeking them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. Well, how many of you know that when you get born again, you are the righteousness of God. Yes. Now we're to make sure that that righteousness, we're walking in the light yes. of our righteousness. Amen. What's that mean? We're not living sin conscious. Right. Right. We're not living conscious of the past, conscious of our mistakes, conscious of what we have repented of. We're all, it, once we've repented, I mean, we're forgiven, cleansed yes. from that. Let's yes. not walk uh, let's not walk with a cloud of sin consciousness of where we've missed it, what we've done wrong and about our past over our head. That will not help us to walk accurately. So we have to, to walk accurately. We need to be mindful. I'm right with God. I've been made the righteousness of God. Therefore I can live boldly the plan of God. I can exercise my faith boldly. Amen. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, Righteousness means being right and doing right. Every single day of our life, we need to make sure we're holding in place that we're seeking to to, uh, do right, be right, to be right toward others, be right toward God, be right toward our spouse, be right toward our local church, be right toward our employer. Amen. And do right. Every day, these are the things that we hold in place. We seek these first. Notice when we seek first the kingdom of God and do what's right in his eyes, notice what's going to happen. All these things will be added. You won't have to chase them. You won't have to pursue them. You won't have to get things out of order by putting the pursuit of natural things in front of the seeking of him first. Amen. Amen. Uh, Now, to keep things as a believer, for every Christian to keep things in proper order, it's first of all God, right? Um, And the plan of God for our life. Included in the plan of God is the part and the supply you hold in the body of Christ. Um, too much of the time as we're young, spiritually growing up spiritually, when we first got born again, we were so aware of self, right? That's just part of human nature. We live with us. We're aware of us. Um, but as we grow and mature, we, we start seeing the big picture, not just the singular picture of me and mine. We start seeing the whole. That's a sign we're growing up. And if we're not seeing the whole, we're invited to grow to see the whole. When I say the whole, I'm talking about the whole body of Christ. How does how I live affect the body? It matters that the decisions I make are going to be a blessing to the body of Christ, not just to me, but to the body of Christ, to my local church. Amen. Uh, We think of the whole when we live our daily lives. We won't ever do anything to injure the body. Oh my goodness. Don't do anything to injure our local church, to uh, cause difficulties in our local church. Why? Because that's getting things out of order. And uh, we have to make sure that we live accurately. It's not accurate living to, uh, if I could say this, to not be in our proper place in the body of Christ, not occupying what we've been born into. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18. Paul is writing and he tells us, But now hath uh, God set the members. What he's talking about is every individual believer. God has set the members, every one of them in the body as it had pleased him. So I'm not trying to put myself in a place so that I'm pleased. I want him pleased. Now, I don't know the bodies 
the, the whole body like he knows the whole body. And I don't even know me like he knows me, right? He knows you so accurately, so keenly. He knows where you will fit. He knows where, what will bring out the best in you. So he's going to place you based on what's best for you and best for the body. So that's why we don't decide, hey, I choose where I serve and the supply I bring to the body. No, we let him choose because God, look at this. God sets the members, every one of them in the body. Look at this as it hath pleased him. If he is pleased to set me in a local, in a certain place within his body, then I choose to be pleased to be there. Why? I'm pleased to be there because he's pleased to put me there. It's an honor that he has taken of this, the body of Christ and made me a member and gave me a, not only made me a member, gave me a function. I'm to function there. I'm to bring a supply there. This is part of living accurately. When people don't live accurately, they get off the plan of God. They get off the will of God. And when we veer from the plan of God, we get out of the will of God then we, if I could say this, uh, we, we get on in a place where the enemy can, t- can attack us. Mm-hmm. And how will he attack? He'll attack finances. He'll attack health. He'll attack a business. He'll attack a family. He'll attack a marriage. So our safety is in being where God told us to be, so keeping proper order, yes. living accurately. Yes. Now, I love something that Brother Hagan. now, he was teaching in his Bible school. This was in the... Uh, 70s. And I heard a recording and he made this one statement. I only heard him make it this once this way. And it was so good. It landed in me. And he said, if we would get our spiritual lives where they ought to be, what's he mean? Accurate. Mm -hmm. That we're fulfilling the plan of God, feeding our spirits, being doers of the word, following the Holy Ghost, living accurately. He said, if we would get our spirits where they ought to be, our bodies would start responding. Now listen to that. Many times people have problems with their health or problems with their finances or problems in their marriage because something is not not being done accurately within the, the plan that they're following. Gotten off course, left something out. Um, this is so key to every believer is our place in the body where God set us. It pleased him to set us there. So we need to rejoice that we have a place in his body. And we are so pleased to not just occupy that place, but function, 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 bring a supply serving in that place. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter four and verse 16, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Classic translation. It says this, for because of him, the whole body, the church in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied. When each part with power adapted to its need is working properly in all its functions, grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. You go, wow, that's a lot of words in there. What does that mean? In essence, he's saying everyone has a part, a place to to serve, a place they belong in the body of Christ. And just as the joints of your body bring a supply to other parts, you are a joint in the body of Christ bringing a supply to others. And when we're bringing our supply, then there's greater power flowing in the body. And that body, the body of Christ grows up. The the whole body matures. So if we're out of place, it affects someone else. It affects the body. When we're in place, it affects the body. If we decide not to serve or serve in some capacity in the body of Christ, then it's going to affect the body of Christ at large. That's what it's saying, that we have a supply to bring. What an honor. Amen. And it affects more than us. So to live accurately, we have to bring our supply to the body of Christ. 
Now you say, how do I do that? Well, the primary way you're going to do that's in your local church. Amen. The primary way you're going to, to bring a supply to the body of Christ is you have to be where fellow believers are gathered. Yeah. Yeah. We can't sit at home by ourselves right. and think that we're being the full supply to the body mm-hmm. as we ought. Now, I want to, rem- I want to bring something to you um, in connection with this because a lot of people, many times they haven't been taught about their supply mm-hmm. to bring to a local church. Right. You know, I was raised in the local church. I am local church minded. Every believer needs to be local church minded because how do you fit in the body of Christ except to those that are in your community? That's where you're going to directly connect is to the believers in your own um, territory. And that is the local church. Number one, God will lead you to the local church to, to go to. He will lead you. It's not just picking wherever you want, but uh, he will direct you. And you say, well, he hasn't told me where to go. Go out and visit churches in your community. If you're not part of a local church, you don't have a pastor, go visit those in your community and listen to him as you go. Because sometimes you'll just walk in, you go, this is the place. I just know in my spirit, I fit here. It's not necessarily you'll hear a voice. Go to this church. (laughs) You know, he he may speak in a very definite, clear way, but just go where it seems like your spirit is fed. The word is preached and you fit there. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know the people, it can feel like home to you. And uh, that's, that's the primary way, you know, but you can't just sit at home and say, where do I go? Go out and visit. See, God directs movement. He can't direct stops where people are stopped and not. Faith is a movement. Make, meaning this, faith moves. Yes. Faith doesn't just sit stationary and then look to be led. When we, want to, when we need to be led of the Lord, we need to make movement mm-hmm. of somehow so he can direct us. Like this, you can't steer a parked car. Start making movement and God will direct us. The steps of the, 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 our steps are led of the Lord, directed of the Lord. The steps of a righteous man, that's you. Um, we're led of the Lord, directed of the Lord, but we have to be making movement. So you don't sit at home and just say, where do I go? We make movement. We look. Uh, So I grew up in a local church. I value the local church. I know how, uh, what it means to be part of a local church. I served in the local church as long as we attended the local church. Um, From the time I was little, every Saturday we were out mowing the lawns, getting, getting that place ready for Sunday. My mother took us kids and we went out and we got the yards ready. That was just part of our, our life. What was it? That is bringing a supply. You might think it's just, it's just a lawn mowing. God's family has needs just like your own family has needs. And nothing is beneath us in the family. Whatever that household of faith needs, we're, we're willing to bring that supply. We don't want to get this limited view of the body of only wanting to do what's public. I'll do anything that's needed in the, in the family. Yes. Amen. And I know you're the same way. We're the same way. Whatever God needs me to do, I'm willing to do. Yes. And you might think, well, it's not very important. Well, if nobody mowed the lawns in front of our church growing up and nobody did it, everyone would know in the community, somebody doesn't care about that building about that property, about that local church, let it go unattended for several months. And it'll, it'll be, it'll show up really quick that no one cared. I care. You care. So we put our hand to something in that local church because nothing is beneath us. Why? Because we're here to serve. Amen. But, uh, not everyone has been taught the value and the importance of the local church in the life of the believer. I realized that not everyone was raised in a local church. They weren't taught that, uh, the local church was not optional in my life and it's still not. I am local church minded. And why is that? Because I'm body of Christ minded. That's why I'm body. That's why I'm local church minded because the, that's the place where the body gathers. Now, um, Brother Hagen was our, Kenneth E. Hagen was our spiritual father for decades. He talks about something that he had when um, Jesus spoke to him on one particular occasion. Um, Jesus was correcting something that they were doing 
uh, there at his um, prayer and healing school. And um, they were counseling people uh, in the prayer and healing school. And this was before they had their own local church. First of all, there was their Bible school and they had prayer and healing school and then a local church grew out of that. So before their local church uh, was in place, um, they would end up ministering to people in prayer and healing school. And then people would call and say, well, we want counseling. So they started and he said, we, we ended up becoming a counseling center, but that wasn't their vision. That's not what God told them to do. They veered off just because people's needs kind of drew them that way. So one day God's addressing this with Brother Hagen, and he said this to him. He said, um, what's the purpose of prayer and healing school? He said, well, it's to pray and to teach healing. He said, so it's not a counseling center. No, he said, you veered. And then Jesus said this, people need to be past, uh, counseled in their own sheepfold. Yes. What's that mean? In their own congregation yes. by their own pastor. Yes. And then listen to what Jesus said. He said, if those coming to you that are needing counseling, he said, you tell them to go to their own sheepfold, to their own pastor, because their pastor gets acquainted with them and knows the things about their life to help them more accurately. You know, with, with Dad Hagen, people would come and they would visit the city, maybe visit prayer and healing school, but that's no sign you know the people. And so sometimes uh, people would ask for intimate, more specific help. But if you don't know someone well, it's hard to give them a well-rounded counsel right. without knowing their situation and all the sides connected to it. But a pastor would know that if someone's part of a local church and they, they, they're an active functioning part of their local church, their pastor will get to know them. So Jesus said, um, he said, sheep need to be counseled in their own sheepfold by their own pastor. Now listen to what Jesus said next. He said, and if they don't have a pastor, that is their problem. Now they may think they need counseling in their finances or in their marriage or with their health, but Jesus said, if they don't have a pastor, that's their problem. Why? Because people who have a pastor will, will hear answers for every arena of their life, for their health, for their marriage, for their finances. So this is what Jesus said. He said, without, if they don't have a pastor, that is their problem. So what's that mean? If people don't have a pastor, they also don't have a place where they're functioning. In the, in the local body, be local church minded. You say, well, there's no local church in my area. It's worth a drive. It's worth a drive um, to, to, to be kept safe under the anointing that can only function through the pastoral office just to be under the care of that anointing. There's a, there is a safety for the sheep in that pastoral anointing, that pastoral office. This is part of living accurately. Um, having a shepherd. Um, no, he doesn't take the place of Jesus, but he is an extension of Jesus. Amen. So when we listen to him, we're listening to what Jesus would say to our life when we're listening to our pastor. Amen. Amen. That's not to take the place of your fellowship with Jesus, but it is, an, God gave these uh, precious gifts. Jesus gave these precious gifts to the body of Christ to help keep the sheepfold safe. So uh, not only are you kept safe by having a pastor and being part of a local church, but now you have a place where you can serve and bring your supply to the body of Christ. Amen. We all need to have a pastor. I said, we all need to have a pastor for the believer to live accurately. He cannot put his profession above his place in the body of Christ. Now listen to that. We can't put our profession first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Part of seeking God first in his kingdom is part, is, uh, part of that is taking our place in the body. Yes. If we're missing church because we've got to work 
Sometimes, now listen, don't, we don't become legalistic either. Rarely, for some, if somebody cannot attend church because maybe something happened at work that calls for them to be there. An exception, that's fine. But the rule is, I'm in church. Why? Because if I don't take my place in that local church family, I'm not living accurately. And I give place to the enemy to attack me. I've got to keep me safe, my family safe, my children safe by keeping them under the anointing of a pastor, keeping them in the safety of the anointing of that local church body, a place where the word is fed, a place where God answers the the questions in my life. Amen. If people get that out of order and they start putting their job above that, now they're not living accurately and it opens the door to the enemy to attack. Amen. Amen. So every believer has, a, has the honor to be able to have a pastor, a local church. And you say, there's nobody, there's no place to go in my, in my community. Well, you have a couple of options. Number one, drive. Because I will inconvenience myself to be where I can hear God. Yes. That's worth the inconvenience. Yes. Number two, do I need to move? to get to a place where my family's kept. Number three, should I just be praying, would God have me here to pray in a a church, to pray in a pastor for this community? You have to to follow God on that. But I'm just saying it's not okay for us to be okay with not having a pastor. It's a safety to our life. Amen. Well, these are some of the things we're addressing and how to be accurate under that anointing that's on our life. Um, Out of my book, we're teaching this, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We invite you, get your copy. You can go to JesusTheHealer.org and purchase your copy there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, Nancy Dufresne gives clarity on how we are to walk successfully in this era. It instructs those in the ministry, but also brings instruction to every believer in helping them to fulfill the will of God for their lives. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. God has provided a way for His children to have ongoing visitations from Him. But many Christians don't recognize these visitations. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 9th through the 11th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Nancy Dufresne, and I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. God bless you. Partnership helps with crusades held nationwide and abroad, printing and publishing of books and other materials, operational costs in TV and other media broadcasts. For more information and to sign up to become a partner, go to DufresneMinistries.org.